Uh, so, good afternoon everyone. Today I'm going to report to you about Soxlet Extraction. Soxlet Extraction was first invented in 1879 by Franz von Soxlet. The original purpose of this apparatus was the extraction of a lipid from a solid material. So Franz Soxlet used to work in a dairy industry and he wanted to study the fats in milk. So what is this Soxlet Extraction? It is a procedure for extracting non-volatile and semi-volatile organic compounds from solids. The Soxlet extraction process ensures intimate contact of the sample matrix with the extraction solvent. It can be used to extract lipids or fats from a biological sample, uh, like what Franz Soxlet did. However, it's not only limited to that. It can also be, for example, an inorganic sample or such. So when can you use Soxlet extraction? Soxlet extraction can be used if your desired compound has a limited solubility in a solvent and the impurity should be insoluble in that solvent. The Soxlet method uses heating so it cannot be used for substances that degrade due to heat. The reason this happens is because as you increase the temperature, solubility also increases. So uh, there might be substances in your compound that become soluble as you increase the temperature and this might affect your data. So here are the components of Soxlet extraction. First, uh, you have the stirrer and then the round bottom flask. And then here, number three is a distillation pot. Number four is the thimble. Number five is the solid or your sample. Six and seven is your siphon top and exit. Number eight is the expansion adapter. Nine is the condenser. And number 10 and 11 is the cooling water out and in. So these are some of the important components of a Soxlet extractor. First, you have the condenser, this one. Uh, basically condenses a gaseous substance into a liquid state through cooling. Next we have the thin ball here. That's where you put your sample or the solid. That's where it's being placed. And then you have your siphon. This periodically empties the thin ball. And one thing that wasn't mentioned earlier is a percolator. This thing here. It circulates a solvent. So as the solution climbs up, eventually once it's at the top, it will eventually once it's at the top it will fall down back into the round, round bottom flask but due to the overflowing and the pressure that's being pushed i attached a video here for a better understanding of the soxlet extractor in a soxlet extraction the heat is supplied through a mantle into which is placed a flask containing the extracting solvent along with some anti-bumping granules Above this, via a suitable adapter, is placed the Soxlet extraction apparatus. The solid to be extracted is held in a paper thimble uh, which sits in the apparatus. The condenser is placed above the extraction apparatus with the water entering the lower arm and leaving the upper arm as usual. The mantle is adjusted so that the solvent pours gently. The condensing solvent falls into the thimble, slowly extracting any soluble material. When the apparatus fills, the solvent siphons back into the refluxing flask. The process is then allowed to continue for as long as necessary. So how does Soxlet extraction work? First, the sample that you have chosen is packed in a filter paper which is then placed in the thimble and is placed in a distillation flask containing the solvent of particular interest or the solvent that you have chosen. Next, vapors of a fresh solvent produced in a distillation flask pass through the thimble containing the material to be extracted and are liquefied in the condenser. The condenser is over here. So when the liquid reaches the overflow level in the thimble, a siphon aspirates the solution and the liquid falls back into the distillation flask. This solution carries the extracted solutes into the bulk liquid. The separation of solute from solvent takes place in the distillation flask. Then solute is left in the flask and fresh solvent vapors pass back into the solid bed of sample material. 
So this is the driving force behind the sock slit because once it refluxes into the boiling flask, it is then evaporated again and the evaporation only evaporates fresh solvent. This means that all the extractables or lipids remain in the flask while fresh solvent travels up and down again and this process is repeated until complete extraction is achieved. So what solvents can we use? Uh, there are a lot of solvents to use, however these are some of the common ones. Like for example you have the dichloromethane, acetone, hexane, or a mixture of both acetone and hexane. However the use of non-polar solvents only is not recommended. So Soxlet extraction does have its advantages. Uh, for one it recycles the solvent. You can just use a fixed volume of solvent and it is autonomous. Autonomous in a way because you can start the extraction, set a timer and leave it. Then when you come back, the extraction will be complete. So you can just leave it on its own and it will do its thing. And it is also scalable. There are various sizes of Soxlets to use for larger volumes. This makes it a great research instrument. Like you can examine the effect of increasing the amount of sample you are extracting or you can increase the temperature or you may also increase uh, your sample size. Lastly, the uses of Soxlet extraction can be applied in these following sectors. It can be used in biofuel production, since lipids are the main component in biofuel. It can be used in oils or fragrances, environmental analysis. Uh, you can analyze soil, seawater, sludge, or even wastes. And lastly, food testing. So that is all for my report. Thank you so much for watching. But before you go, I attached a video link in the description below. Uh, it is an experiment about uh, the extraction of oil from walnuts. So feel free to check it out.